couple today. Well, I think we're going to be back up on YouTube here with the audio stream. As the attack is on here, she'll take the puck away. Sent up the right wing wall into the neutral zone. And then Parker pushed it up the right wing wall. Pollitt whacked at it. Now a bouncing puck in the neutral zone. Picked up by Lebsack on net. Backstrom with a stop. Kinch gets it back on his stick and left it there for Parker. Parker off right wing. Here come the Grizzlies from the slot. That shot was blocked. In the near corner now. Bouncing puck. Cooley region. She'll pick it up from the center circle. They'll dump it in off the near corner. They want a line change. Brings around to the far corner where it's picked up by Parker along with McKinch behind the net. Parker surveys the ice. Shots are one apiece. 14.35 to play here in the first period. No score. Into the zone. Mason with a high shot. Batted away in self-defense by Backstrom. Now Brennan Mason has come out skating well. He's showing up on the ice and he's getting noticed. Here's McKinch, bottom of the near circle, pushed it up left wing. Off the stick of Matt DeRosa. He'll chase the puck along with Coffin. DeRosa digs it out, tries to get around from behind the net. Nice defensive play by Gesta Shepard. Just hopping across the blue line. The Grizzlies get onside, and now it's Coffin behind the net to the corner in the chill zone to Brendan Falick. Falick pushed it up left wing. Now here's a chance for Mason. Oh, he almost had an opportunity without a defender back on him. But And we have another power play coming. I believe the Chill are going to get their second opportunity of the game. Looks like a high stick. And Mark, we got your microphone on too. You're all good to go if you turn it, if it's green. I'm ready. You know, you know how to, you guys have know, figured out how to work the mic. Not everybody understands that green dot at the bottom. I had it turned off so he couldn't talk. He must have figured it out. Sorry. <laughs> Another power always, play. Always testing me, aren't you? DeRosa going to serve two minutes. 13.43 left here in the period. The second power play for the Cooley Region Chill. Of course, a super important game here as the St. Louis Junior Blues took two from Granite City. Mason, nice pass there to Coffin. Coffin chops it into the corner. Joey Wycheck. Now they're pinned up against the boards as the clock ticks on this Cooley Region power play. Comes back near side and wall. Hayes can't clear. Brennan Mason. Brennan Mason feeds an near point, then drop down low. Felix. Felix. Here's a wind up a shot by Mason and a kick save made by Backstrom. Now the clear from the corner, unsuccessful. Mason keeps the puck in. Brennan Mason is all over the ice here in this first period. Battle for the puck along the end wall here. Far side, sent back from the circle. Gets to Shepard, to Mason, near circle, shot back from the save. Oh, another shot on goal for Brennan Mason. That's four now for the chill, and that power play looked much better, Tim. Yeah, excellent uh, opportunities there for Brennan Mason. I'd like to see him just one time that, have a little bit better opportunity to beat the goaltender. Backstrom's pretty good in the nets. You're going to have to get it off a little quicker. <laughs> yeah, that's an understatement. Yes, Backstrom's numbers are outstanding. And a 1.51 goals against average. Yeah, I know he leads the leads the league in a, a few categories he there. He does indeed. 16 and 5, 940 save percentage. That's definitely the best. And he's 3 and 2 against the Chill. 1.63 goals against 938 save percentage and one shutout against the Chill. He does have four shutouts on the season. Here's a rush by the Cooley Region Chill. Just 40 seconds left on the power play. They're going to have to regroup in the neutral zone. Dent. Cross ice to Pollitt, neutral zone, right wing. Now Vanderhoven tapped across the line. Chasing is Kismetulin. Kismetulin couldn't pick up the puck. And the Grizzlies will clear to center. 20 seconds remain on the power play. Escobar took a big bump into the penalty box area. There's Vanderhoven with a touch pass, but intercepted here and sent all the way down by Newman. And that'll take care of just about all of the Cooley Region power play. Just eight seconds left. And they're in their defensive zone. Sent into the neutral zone to Vanderhoven. Tried to touch it off the wall, unable to do so. That was Ryan Gargaro sending it back to Vanderhoven. Stick handling comes off his stick, though. Lost in the high slot. And picked up here by Heitkamp. Goes behind the net with a four check from Gargaro. And it'll be sent up left wing. Stolen by Coffin. Coffin banks it off the near boards. And a loose puck in the neutral zone. Picked up here by the Grizzlies. 
Drop back to Heitkamp at his own blue line. Skates up the left wing, shoots it off the glass, rings around to the far corner. Hoffman trying to get the puck off the forward. Not able to get it there. As the Grizzlies walk it up towards the high slot shot on net and the save made by Devin Nadal. Once again, that was the veteran on defense, Noel Parker. A 99 birth year, 5'11", 195 from St. Paul, Minnesota. 27 points on the season for Parker. I'll tell you, on that line, I think they took your advice. Keep it simple. Just play simple game. Check it out when you need to. Yep, that's that's... When you got a lot of new guys in the lineup, it's a little bit smart way to play the game to give yourself a little bit more chance to score or to, to maybe relieve some pressure. Puck along the near boards inside the Cooley region end. They lead in shots 4-2, to two, no score, 10-55 and counting as the puck battle continues. A grinders game down in the chill end. There's Coffin back behind the net. And the chills with four defensemen in this lineup here this afternoon. That's Escobar, nice feed. Gets it up on the stretch, and now it's Felix. Chips it towards the high slot, comes off Escobar's stick. He knocks it down the neutral zone. He'll come in, drop it off right wing. Top of the near circle, Mason chips it towards the net. Uh, unable to get that stick on the puck here at the near doorstep was Escobar. Grizzlies will clear it over the head of Gesta Shepard. That's going to be icy, and the draw comes back into the Rochester end with 10-20 left here in the first period. I would say that this has started out much better than what I anticipated. Well, I, I think it did start out a little bit slow. You could see the chill kind of just laying back, not a lot of sense of urgency. But as the first period has went on, they felt they, they're feeling a little bit more confident, I think, with the guys they have in the lineup today. So they're starting to open it up. And having those power plays don't hurt either. Gives you a little bit of more attack zone time. It's Parker set up behind his net, chips it off left wing. McKinch looks up ice, stretches it down the left wing wall. That's going to hop past Dent Stick. Pollitt will pick it up with DeRosa on his back. Now from the corner, sent towards center, intercepted. Up across the blue line was Peyton Hart, but he lost it into the end wall where it's picked up by Garrett Smith. Smith now off to the left point, shoveled down low there by Flanders, and they battle for it in the near corner of the Chile. Grizzlies working the puck in the attack zone. Finally, the chill pick it up on the right wing wall, having trouble getting out. Finally, it gets knocked into the neutral zone. A lot of play here along the near boards as the clock continues to tick. Four to two, the shots. And the chill doing a good job closing lanes. All the way back, line change for the CRC. 9.06 left here in the period. Flanders takes it up. <laughs> Flanders just goes down. <laughs> he wasn't hit hard. He just kind of crumpled as he was trying to get out across the blue line. Backstrom chips it with a backhand to the corner. Robertson playing forward today, along with Gargaro at center and Lebsack on the other wing. Banked off the near boards. Smith takes a hit. And a penalty coming up against Coffin, I believe, and a kind of a weak penalty it is. They got him for a knee. Must have stuck the leg out a little bit, and, and that's what the ref was able to catch. And one of those dangerous plays in hockey you just don't want to do. You got to keep the legs in. You got to keep the knees in, both for your protection for yourself and for the the guy you're making the play on. It was pretty easy call. He was right there. It was right. It was right in front of him, but. That's that, nope. that's that Chicago mentality don't, coming don't be, out. Dude. Let's just grind it out. Let's <laughs> let's rip them apart. Don't, that's okay. Don't be, there's no penalties. Don't be afraid of that, Mike. Mark, just put it right oh, up yeah, in that's there. That's one of my big fears. <laughs> You're not afraid. I know that. Yeah, I just didn't think it really had. I mean, I you know, it was a knee. I just think it was a very weak knee. Nonetheless, you can call it. Save there by Nate out, and they'll drop the puck again. First. Power play of the game for the Rochester Grizzlies. Yeah, it wasn't much, Rick. I don't, I don't question that on you. But it, once again, that's one of those things. I think if you talk to most coaches and players, you need to try to get it out of the game. So just take it out, even if it's close. That quick one timer was wide, taken by the Grizzlies, and they turn the puck over. But no stick there for Gesta Shepper and clear it. Oh, looking for Mason. If he could have gotten around the defense there, he might have had a chance for a breakaway. But Logan Olson played it. And he gets it off left wing to Heitkamp, and he'll softly push it off the left wing wall. A little bit too far, 128 left here on the power play. Held into the blue line again here by the Grizzlies. 
Working it to the near side. Backhand down low by Olsen. Back behind the chill net now. Work to the far corner. As the Grizzlies cycle back to Olsen. Left point. Shot goes wide off the end wall. Pops back behind the net. Now picked up by the chill. They'll clear it down all the way. 107 left now on the kill. Stretch pass by the goalie. Backstrom up left wing. Neutral zone to center. Grizzlies now working it to the right side. Nice moves by Peyton Hart. Hart into the zone. Look at the stick handling around the defense. He goes behind the net now. Hart then feeds it off to the corner to Smith. Smith makes a couple nice moves. And he'll send it back to Hart. Drop back to the blue line. The Kinch looking to the far circle. Hart dropped it down low. The give and go off the stick of Kiss Matulin held in here by the Grizzlies. There's Parker with a shot of his block. And picked up by Parker again. There's another shot off the pillows and they down and cleared down all the way. Number one, PK in all the NA3. Stretch here again by the Grizzlies. Parker trying to get around Dent. Dent pushes him up against the glass. And then the chill will clear again. That'll just about take care of the Grizzlies power play. And again, another rock solid penalty kill here by the CRC. McKinch behind his net comes out near side with it. From the near circle, stretch left wing. Skeeter goes down. Failing with a little behind the back pass. He was looking for Wycheck, but back the other way come the Grizzlies. Here's Parker again. Parker stops on a dime at the near circle. Chill Skeeter goes down, pops right back up. That was to Shepard, and he throws kind of a late hit he could have gotten called for. And now that Chill with some space up left wing, cross it. Right wing now, cross the line, left sack from the near circle. Left sack, centering pass, knocked down by McKinch. Here's left sack again, trying for the slot. Oh, and then the whip on the shot by Wycheck. But the Chill still battling for the puck in the slot. Shot again, blocked in front by McKinch. And scrambling down low was Falig, and finally, It'll go back in the neutral zone, and offsides comes left sack. 5.58 left here in the period. Chill and Grizzlies locked up with four shots apiece, no score. A little bit sloppy at that time, but I get, you got to give them credit. A lot of hard work right there to try to keep pucks in the zone, get shots off. They're definitely working hard right now. They just have to, to solve the, 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 the quality shot part of it. Face off of the near dot, one here by the Cooley region. Shot on net, glove saved by Backstrom. Oh, decided to hang on to it. He had Flanders next to him, but he decided, I better just get the face off. Well, I think you saw Escobar coming in with a lot of speed and thought rather than just throw it away, freeze it, get it started all over. The voice you hear there is Mark Thorne. He is the head coach of the Onalaska Hilltopper Girls Hockey Co-op. Such, such a quiet, calming voice. He is a quiet, calming <laughs> voice. And of course, Tim Ebner, Longtime head coach of the Alaska Hilltoppers Boys Club. Joe, the centering pass in front for Brennan Mason. Just couldn't get it past the defensive stick. Here they come up left wing. Cody Regal. Regal put it wide of the net. She'll get a stick on it, trying to work it up the near side. Now taken back behind the net. Stretch pass. Nice dish. Here they come. It's Falick from the near circle. He stopped and then ran out of juice. And the Grizzlies again, up left wing, Regal. Regal trying to push a couple of players. Dent stays on his skates. It's now the Cooley Region chill from their own near circle. Got it up into the neutral zone, quickly slapped right back down. Five minutes to play here in the opening frame. And we are scoreless. Puck battle in the near corner of the chill end. Continues back behind the net. Picked up by the Grizzlies. From the far circle, a little back and forth with Olsen. Now working down low is Haney. More physical play in the corner. Dent stopped the puck to Shepper. Working it up to Kiss Matulin, who clears the zone. And back is Heitkamp. Heitkamp pitches it left wing. Grizzlies coming in. Just across the line was Fogstad. Knee blew a tire and went down. 4.22 remaining here in the first period. I like what I see in terms of the defensive effort from a shorthanded Cooley Region Chill team here today. Well, yeah, I mean, they're trying to get everything organized in the D zone, done a nice job. This last shift in particular, real physical in the corner, strong on the one-on-one -on -one battles. Picked up by the Grizzlies off the draw, banked off the right wing wall from a defensive stick. That was Hunter Wilms. Now thrown on net by Heitkamp, saved by Nadal. And 
and then she'll with a chance up right wing. Oh, lost the handle on it. That was Gargaro. Loose puck center circle. Now it's Robertson. Robertson, normally a defenseman, chips it off the far corner. Puck comes around. High camp. Banks it. Left wing. Back to High Camp. Picks it up in a high slot. Right wing dish bounces off the far boards. And then the chill send it back the other way. Pass a little too far for Gargaro. Waved ice enough. Now in the near corner, Olsen picks it up. 3.34 to play here in the first period. Working it up the left side was Lucas Newman. Now from the near circle, yes for Hoffling. That goes wide off the corner now. High Camp. Worked it back, right point, shot on net, glove save made by Nadal, and we'll have another faceoff down the chill end with 3.20 left here in this first period. Doing a nice job by at least letting Nadal see the puck. You know, they're not in the way, they're clearing guys out in front. They have good sticks right now, so everything's going pretty well for them in the D zone. The goalie should be able to make those types of saves all day. A lot of confidence the way with the defense playing that way from a goalie perspective. You can see the puck, you feel a lot better. Off the draw again, it's the Grizzlies. Parker sends it down. Dent with a hit there. Now along the fireboards, a chill. And a work at neutral zone. Nice bank pass. Here's a chance up ice. It's Brennan Mason. Mason snaps a hard one right off the glass. And a little bit high into the corner and back the other way. On the Grizzlies, Garrett Smith. Centering pass. And that one goes. That's a nice save. Right up into Devin Nadal. And you know what? That was a very tough save to make because the puck kind of deflected up on him and he was able to just get enough of it. That's uh, a dangerous situation. But you see how quick in transition the Grizzlies took that puck in. Well, it didn't help. I like the fact that Brennan Mason comes in with a lot of speed there, but just not the shot you really want to take. If you're going to take that angle shot, it's got to be on net so it doesn't get that hard wrap around the glass and out because you got everybody coming forward and then all of a sudden it has to transition and sometimes it's difficult to get there. Smith hit by Coffin along the end wall here near side. Oh, it's Pollitt back to Coffin in the corner. Gets it to Vanderhoven. Centering pass, here come the chill. Dropped off the left wing wall. Quick shot on that glove save made by Backstrom. The shot taken by Gadel Kismetulin. Once again, I'd like to see some of those shots instead of going so high on Backstrom. Try to keep him a little low because he's so aggressive. He gets caught coming out of the net sometimes, and hopefully you can gain a rebound or two off of that. And once he's that far out, it should be a little easier to get a puck behind him. And our thanks to Johnny Jones helping out on camera, running the uh, rear view camera that you're watching right now on Hockey TV, and Cole Richter at center ice. And it'll be knocked down into the corner by the chill, picked up. Along the end wall here by Noel Parker. Parker surveying the ice. Has Kiss Matulin out in front on the forecheck, but it'll be McKinch up left wing. Backhand pass by Fonstad. Hits off the end wall, and the chill got to it first. Now it comes back to the circle and knocked into the neutral zone. Left wing wall, sent right back in towards the Hitminder Nadal, and steered it with his glove to the far corner. Collett works it along the end wall near side. Turn over there at the near circle. But the Grizzlies didn't do anything with it. Shots are 7 6. Rochester, 155 left here in the period. No score. Defensive battle. Here come the chill. In across the line. The shot goes up high. The extended glove of Backstrom on the shot by Kiss Matula. And he misjudged it, but it was too high. Potstad knocked it off his stick. He wipes out as he comes across the line. She'll have an odd man rush. Drop pass there by Escobar. Low shot. Oh, almost deflected by Escobar right in front on the feed. Now the Grizzlies. There's a one-timer by Kiss Matulin sent in front to Mason and a great save by Backstrom. Another one. Gets blocked in front and then Haney chips it into the neutral zone and guess to Shepard comes back. Backstrom is just on fire right he now. Is, <laughs> he's taken some of the last little bit. There's been some pretty quality shots he's made. He's good, Jill, now with the advantage in shots. Here's a puck in the slot. Behind the back pass there by Felig. And... They're going to take it the other direction. Up ice, here comes Wilms. That shot goes wide left, comes up the near boards, and just out of the zone. Nice pass off the wall again by Mason. Here they cut from the slot. That shot was blocked. As coming in hot was Brendan Felig, and good defense on him. Brendan Mason in this game has been one of the most impressive uh, of the Cooley Region Chill skaters in this first period. He's, he's working hard. He's playing hard. He's making good decisions with the puck. I like what you said, though, Tim. I mean, they got to start taking those shots from the center ice versus up from the side. The last four shots went off the sides all the way around and out. When they get in the middle, you create congestion. That's how you're going to beat Baxter.
Puck inside the chill zone, 34 seconds remain. From the far corner, Newman. Sent back, Olsen towards the net, save made by Nadow, he covers it up. Chill playing with some energy now, as, as the period has went on, they've just continued to gain momentum and momentum and, and energy, and, and gaining some good um, opportunities off of it. Face off at the far circle, down inside the chill end. 23 seconds remain here in the period. And it's going to come back far point. Olsen sent it down low. Quick shot there from the circle and a save made by Nadal. And the chill will send it down all the way. And that'll be an icing with 10 seconds left. Fortunate there because uh, they lost they lost the guy right in that soft spot area, and he was able to get a get a uh, excellent shot off on it. It's just a matter of once again communicating a little better in the D zone right now, and and making sure you've got a guy in position to play all of their guys. You can't let a guy alone that part of the uh, the ice. So you're going to take over the broadcast. I got to head down here at intermission down to the uh, penalty box area. So I got to take over the. You don't have. We you just turn a little music on yeah, there. Yeah, eh? No, we'll we'll be fine. We'll just we'll just let it go. Here's a quick shot down low, back to the same rebound. They almost put it in as Escobar and Kiss Matuan and the crew were putting the rush on. Exactly what we talked about. The shot was low. It forces him to make a play with the pads. There he goes. We're going quiet here, I take it. <laughs> you and I, Tim. <laughs> no, I would agree with you. I think as the period went on, their confidence level went up way high. Uh, they started feeling a little bit better about what they had going on, and uh, they started showing it. So, what do we got going on out of that there? Well, you'll get a chance. I uh, my guess they'll do something with uh, Coach with Rick Frankie on the on his ten years of being here, and, and, and all the time and energy and effort that Rick has put into this. Not only Rick, but his wife Wendy. You know, and just just trying to make a professional broadcast out of this, and. If, if those on online or on air have, have had a chance to see Rick and listen to Rick over the years, I think he's probably one of the best that there is, especially in the North American League. I mean, he does an excellent job, and he takes this pretty, uh, pretty serious and pretty professional in his approach to it. See what they have to say. Yeah. That's the way Rick getting his props. Little plaque there coming his way by Marco Escobar. It's, it's just, once again, we've talked a lot about it.
recognition well deserved. Very well deserved. Ten years, done a lot of different things for him. You know, as far as selling advertising and stuff like that over the years with the original uh, Cooley Region Chill in the North American League, now with the North American League Three. Very nice, got a nice team picture with him. I think he was a little hesitant. He was not one to draw a lot of attention to himself. This is hard for him. You can see that. Oh, no, no, def no doubt about that. I don't know about you, Tim, but it's always been a joy when he calls and says, hey, do you want to do the game with me? And, oh, yeah, you, you know. do You do as many of them as you can. You can't make them all. You try to sometimes, but, you know, it's been fun for me over the years to do the, the games that I've been able to do with them now, having the opportunity this past year to do the high school games and things like that. So always been good, and, and Rick's always been a good friend, close friend. We're, jo we're joined by another partner of crime up in the boat there, Dean Lonsborough. Anything you want to say about Rick? Oh, just just everything he's done for hockey in the area is is just incredible. I'm fortunate to, to call him a friend, and um, his passion for the game is, is unquestionable. So happy for Rick, and I know I'll still see him moving him forward. So Man of many words, Dino. <laughs> Short and sweet. Well, when you put the microphone right there, it doesn't leave him a lot of choice, does it? No, nope, no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. That's okay. He's never a loss for words. So, Rick making his way back up here. We'll take a little break until Rick gets up here. All right, sounds good.
Moments away from second period action here from Green Island Ice Arena in La Crosse. Rick Frankie with you alongside me is Tim Ebner and Dean Lonsbro here in this second period. Johnny Jones to my left on the camera and Cole Richter at center ice. Boy, that was something I Not just, a dry eye in the building, uh, Rick. Even uh, uh, you, I can see it tearing up. Uh, That's tough for an old <laughs> Chicago kind of... Yeah, you know what I mean? That, that was uh, in, 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 I'm 54, I think, uh, am I or gonna be. I don't remember how old I am. I was born in 66, I can't do the math. But that was one of the coolest things I've ever experienced in my entire life, to be recognized for the passion that I have for doing this. And uh, boy, it just couldn't be any better than that. Uh, and I thank everybody for being here. And I thank Michelle Bryant and the Chill organization for um, that incredible honor and uh, the players and uh, boy I just it's just uh, something that I I will remember for the rest of my life well it's people that you meet along the way Rick but it's also those guys that you're able to continue to watch play I mean you got guys that probably are still playing from those first few chill teams uh, in the North American League that were out that are out uh, playing somewhere are out of college now, but they're playing professionally somewhere. And, and those are the things that are fun as, as as things move on and times move on, but you still get to watch some of those and they bring back those memories. Yeah, years after years. I mean, there are so many memories that I have. And, uh, you know, I, I got a message from the very first chill captain, the Dave Milray today. And, uh, you know, I mean, he always oozed class uh, as a captain with a chill. And to this day, as a, as a man in a business world, he's... He's still the same classy guy. I mean, you know, I could go down the list of great players over the years. And uh, when I can sit down and really just share my memories of the Cooley Region Chill in the past 10 years, I will put something together that everybody can take a look at and, uh, and kind of recap those things. But there's so many. Can you, will anyone want to really read through all of it? That's the question. Well, no, I think the best way to do it is just to go back onto YouTube and go look at some of the big <laughs> yeah. calls you had on on uh, goals. Maybe some of the better ones were the fights you had, especially uh, uh, I think Ripplinger was in one against the, uh, oh, uh, back Austin. In the, back in the day, oh, yeah. the fights with, with Ripple and uh, all those boys. Yeah, I mean, it was there were some great, you know, that, they try to curtail the fighting nowadays, but back when we first started in uh, 2010, 2011. It was uh, highly encouraged. It's the Omni Center, and, and yeah, I mean, it was highly encouraged, and there was uh, at least one or two, if not maybe four or five in some of those Austin Bruins versus Cooley Region Chill games in the past. Same thing with the Janesville Jets. Uh, so, uh, yeah, lots and lots of memories. We're ready for second period action. I told the boys down there, this game, they can take this game. They got to keep the fight. I mean, the first period, pretty good. Shots were 9-9. We're scoreless as we meet at the center circle as Marco Escobar looks to win the opening draw, and he does. Brennan Mason sends it off the right wing wall. Puck comes down into the end wall here where a couple of hits are doled out as the Grizzlies try to clear. Can't Dent kept it in. But then it was poked off his stick, and here come the Grizzlies up the left wing. Rochester, nice move. Oh, nice hit by Dent to knock him down here as Mason and Dent were coming back. Now it's Pollitt with a stretch pass. That goes off the back of Brennan Mason. And now here come the Grizzlies into the zone. That's sent towards the slot, and poke checked away by Brian Pollitt. Now it's picked up here by Brennan Mason. Mason tried to clear, couldn't. He'll get a second chance, and it gets it into the neutral zone, then drilled right back in here by the Grizzlies as the puck comes to the bottom of the near circle. Dent uses the end wall to the corner. Pollitt pushes it up the right wing into the neutral zone, tipped ahead by Joey Wycheck. Wycheck will continue to chase behind the net, but the Grizzlies gain control. Minute into period number two, scoreless here at Green Island Ice Arena. Puck comes back towards the near circle. Chill with a backhand into the neutral zone it goes. Controlled here by Gadel Kismetulin. Kismetulin to guess to Shepper. To Shepper off a stick there of a Grizzly skater at center. And now they'll work it in left wing. Grizzlies with a shot on net. Nano with a save. And then a battle behind the net as the Grizzlies try the one-timer to Rosa with a nice feed, but no shot there as they pull the whip. Here's DeRosa again trying to work it out of the corner. He'll get shoved from behind by Joey Wachek. Now Gunderson trying to work it towards the front of the net. Picked up here by Goodell. Kismetulin. To center, here's Vanderhoven trying to work it around the D. Came off his stick in the very last second. That's the line for the chill. They're going to have to try to score some goals. They're going to have to figure something out here. It's a veteran line for them. So those are the, in a game like this, you need them to come through. Devin Nadow's stick is stuck in the back side of the net right now. He's trying to figure out a way to work it through and then go back around and get it. 
it's uh, kind of an awkward situation for a goaltender. And now it's controlled here by the Grizzlies. They don't realize, I don't think, that Nadal has his stick stuck in the back of the net. <laughs> I don't know if Johnny's been able to show it to you, but it is stuck. All right, he did show it to you on Hockey TV. And it's chipped out by Brandon Pollitt. Here come the Grizzlies again. Up right wing they go. And lost it there at the blue line. Gargaro. He sends it in across the blue line. And Jeremiah Lebsack was there, but not able to run with it as it's back and forth neutral zone play. Puck scoots just across the blue line. Brandon Pollitt gets it there. Then it's Gargaro who sent it into the neutral zone. But the Grizzlies bank it off the far boards. Picked up there by Robertson. Net still holding Nadal's stick. Captured, and Nadal still without his stick making saves, blocking the line as he's got the splits working, and what a save. And he'll have a whistle finally, and Nadal with the stick back in his hands. Oh, my goodness, that was close to being a disaster, but the chill <laughs> dodge a bullet. Two really nice saves right there with no stick. Yeah, and, and he, <laughs> you know, he probably could have just went around and grabbed it and gave it a good pull when it was down the far end. It's one of those things where you're afraid to do that and leave an open net, but... I actually think it was good that he did exactly what he did because it, just think if that puck, if he was not in the net and he was on the backside of it, one would just happen to get shot in from the neutral zone. You just know it would happen. Draw one here by the chill. Bottom of the near circle in their own end. The Shepard can't get it out. There's a ripper taken just wide here by the Grizzlies. Back to the far wall now. It's past Hayes' stick and it comes, rings around the end wall back to the near boards where it's hit mid-level by, I guess, the Shepard's stick. Now bottom of the near circle, Grizzlies put it out in front. It went right across the crease, banks off the left wing wall, and then pitched back behind the chill net. Hawks scoots to the corner, Brennan Mason got a piece of it. Now put towards the front, that goes just off of Feleg and into the neutral zone. Grizzlies with the puck, they'll take it in center. And out of the near circle, nice block there by Escobar. He's got a broken stick or something, no? So it's okay, it looks like, no, yeah, he left it there. It's no good, twig done. Well, that was the other guy's stick. Oh, was it? Oh, it was another guy's stick. I was wondering whose stick it was. It's still sitting there at the circle. Here come the Grizzlies on the attack. Shot hits the leg of Feilig and scoots into the corner. To, gets to Shepard trying to clear. Now Kismetulin pushed it up to Vanderhoven. From the top of the far circle, DeShepper got it into the neutral zone. Shots are 11-9. Not much hitting the goaltenders here in this period. But she'll play in some really good defense. His Matulin just banked it back. Chill would like to get another skater out there, and they do make a quick switch. Grizzlies take it in right wing. Shot goes wide off the end boards. Regal picks it up back behind the net. Hassled by Wycheck from behind. And Dent there as well. Here comes Goodell Kismetulin. And that went off his stick and quickly sent by the Grizzlies up the left side. And Dent goes down and they will call grasping the puck. Grasping. Yes. It's not that easy to do with hockey gloves either. And he, you know, that, that movement with the fingers is not the easiest. It's real easy. Not for me. I had, I had kind Paws of. Paws like that, those yeah, short they, little fingers. The mitts. You've got the there. mitts. Between you the and mitts, Dino with thick. those short little chubby fingers. They're thick. Thick is good. Thick is good. Girth. Unlike some that look like they could have nail polish on them. Off <laughs> 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 the draw. <laughs> Here comes the chill as Gargaro from the center circle flips it all the way down. There's a collision into the end wall here as the puck is in the Grizzlies' hand. They'll take it up the left wing. Bouncing puck comes towards the net. Nadal will cover it up. Wilms was approaching, and then Brandwin Pollitt had a little something to say there, and I think he's talking to the linesman. Thought they might get into a little something there, but it did not escalate. Draw will be down the chill end. Far circle. 14.59 to play here in the second period. We are scoreless. I suppose I should change my scoreboard to say second period. That would probably be the proper thing to do. We're going to drop the puck again. You've been slightly distracted. I have been, eh, with good reason. <laughs> with good reason, right? Maybe. <laughs> oh, you just busted my chops about my stubby fingers. I... <laughs> That was my radio name when I worked in Spokane, Washington. Chubby fingers in the morning. 
<laughs> Actually, it wasn't. Here's Escobar, got a piece of the puck, but now the Grizzlies going to take that puck in from the corner. That was Jesper Hoffling out in front, and Nadal pounces on it like a cat. Rochester definitely picking the pace up this period. You can see them moving their feet a lot more, um, playing through things, not getting held up on the walls. They're moving it around. Faceoff stays down the Cooley region shell end. As you're with us here on this Sunday, matinee hockey, last regular season game. Grizzlies putting the pressure on as they send it down around the corner. Rings around to the near corner now. Wilms pressured by Escobar, knocks him flat down from behind. Picked up there at the circle and poke checked there by Dent. And worked along the end wall to the far side to Dent. Dent now from the bottom of the circle. Nice outlet pass. He's got Escobar with some space up the left wing. Marco Escobar cutting towards center and a late whistle as he tangles up with a Grizzly skater towards the net. A little bit of a delayed offsides call, I do believe, but they've got a gathering there trying to break up. 14-15 to play here in the second period. Want to uh, congratulate the Chippewa Falls hockey team for advancing to the state championship, beating Hudson. Can't say I was unhappy about that. Congratulations to them. Great goaltending. I was at the game. Were it was you? A good game. Good high school hockey game. People behave themselves a little better than they did at Hudson. No. <laughs> Back behind the net. <laughs> I might have to ask you to elaborate later. <laughs> Here come the Grizzlies. Upright wing. Taken and centered, but nobody there in a dark jersey. Well, that's going to miss Kiss Matulin on the left wing. Drop pass. Now it's going to get past Gargero, who chases. And they're going to pull it back the other direction. Anything you can say, Dean? <laughs> No, it was the same group. Oh, okay. Sa same people, <laughs> okay. different school. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm not going to go into the, the way society is raising our children. Okay. But. All right. <laughs> it's unfortunate you are a target of some of that. <laughs> yeah. My whole life. Oh, boy. Tim knows. <laughs> Chill trying to clear, not able to do it the first time, and still it's DeRosa who keeps it in. Knocks it down to the corner looking for Smith. Dent with a backhand clear to the neutral zone and racing back the other direction is Briar Flanders. Flanders with the puck back behind the Grizzlies netminder to the near side and the clearing attempt unsuccessful. Here's Vanderhoven. Vanderhoven goes behind the net to the far side. Drops it off to Gargero and then it's knocked back the other direction and here come the Grizzlies. That's sent into the zone. First back is Pollitt. To the corner, Coffin back to Pollitt, near side end wall. Stretch pass, left wing, Gargaro. Ryan will send it wide to the net right. And the chase is on for the puck. Grizzly's going to get to it first. Dean's buzzing a little bit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. I'll stay away. Maybe, maybe away. I was affecting that You were, you were that causing buzz. Dean's microphone to buzz just a, a little, little bit. A little feedback. <laughs> you crashing, got that right. Crash and bang in the corner as Fodstad was there. Now Brennan Mason slings it off left wing. Brendan Falick. Falick with a soft pitch with a backhand ahead. He was trying to get it to Wycheck, but the defenseman Heitkamp able to get it back into the neutral zone. Now left wing, an opportunity here for the Grizzlies. From the far circle, drop pass. Wide check on Hayes defensively. That slapper taken from the far point was way off target. And now it's Felix looking up ice, left wing to center. Hops over wide check stick. He'll chase it. But the Grizzlies going to get there first. Height camp, D to D pass. I think that's Olsen now that has it behind the net. Thank goodness for my monitor. I can see actually who that was back behind the other end of the rink. Here is Dent. Yeah, it. it there are some challenges here at Green Island uh, in terms of vision yeah, from our you, perspective. My point was you've come a long ways technology-wise since those first few games, too. <laughs> yeah. I'd have to agree with that. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've tried to up it just a little bit to be able to have ways to make up for certain things. Well, the big monitor here, you're getting older. Your eyes are getting a little less oh, yeah, able little, to focus. A little less. <laughs> I assure you they are getting worse and worse as the minutes go by. 
going to be pulled all the way back into the Grizzlies end with 11.31 left here in the second period. Shots are 13-9 in favor of the road team. Held the blue line by Gesta Shepard. Towards the front, bounced off a chill skater there as it comes to the fireboards. Gargaro over, throws the body. Picked up by Hoffbauer. Now it's Parker coming in across the blue line. Parker bounces off of a hit from DeShepper. That pass misses Drew Robertson in the neutral zone, sent towards the net. Easy can of corn for Nadal. He'll hang on to it, and the draw will be down inside the chill end. And scoreless with 11.02 left here in the second. I think the real question at this point is, is can we keep Dean away from the pizza that's down on the, oh. on the fan deck? He keeps leaning over farther and farther. I think he's drooling a little bit, smelling that pizza. Dean's been carb-free for yeah, how long? You guys, I, he I, says he is. I don't believe it. I do I do eat a few carbs, but uh, it's been a while since I've had pizza. It smells good, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah. All All right. Right. The smell is still good. <laughs> here goes Follett. It's just the uh, it's just the carbs that are no good, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, don't, you don't you don't gain anything, and you don't take in the carbs from smelling it. No. No, you don't. You don't. <laughs> you could all your favorite foods, Dean. You could just grab them, have them around you, and you just smell them. Then that's fine. Yeah. What would be in the menagerie? What would be the Dean menagerie of foods to smell? Oh, uh, that would be uh, lobster. Uh huh. Ribeye. Ribeye. Some of some of that some of the dishes I see on your Facebook, <laughs> hey, uh, which would be you know some sausage stuff. So, this yeah. is what he Dean's, says: Italian Dean's, sausage each time. Dean's got no idea what paella and all that stuff is. Trust me. <laughs> oh, I'm learning. Just put it in front of him, and he'll eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Offsides for the Grizzlies. They pull the draw back out near dot, and it's going to be picked up by Pollitt. But contested stick there gets in the Grizzlies' favor, and they go around Pollard here for the bottom of the near circle. Shot block, Newman trying to work it, but Wycheck got his stick down in front of it. That one snaps top shelf down and in, and the Grizzlies finally get on the scoreboard. It's the same thing we talked about on the other end in that uh, first period late. They just left a guy wide open in that, uh, that soft area there, and he was able to snap a shot off. It was a great shot. I mean, there's not a lot Nadal could do on it. It, it just squeaked inside the far pipe. That was Hunter Wilms with his 12th goal of the season. And the Grizzlies have a one to nothing lead with 10-27 left here in the second period. You can't leave a guy alone sitting in that area. Yeah, I mean, the shot was absolutely perfect. It went right off the top crossbar. Near post for the viewers. We'll have to see if it, it was you. Whenever you go over uh, by Dean, you, you get the buzzing from the wireless. That's set off back behind the net now to the near wall. Chill and Gargero. Now worked ahead by Felix and a blast goes right off the defense and another one taken just wide. Grizzlies with a puck, set up right wing, chopped into the chill defensive zone. Gets to Shepard first to it. To Shepard, left wing wall Felix. Felix back to the Shepard, off the glass, left wing. Puck comes in back behind the Grizzlies net. And quickly picked up here by Rochester. Nice dish, left wing, here they come. That centering pass though, tipped away. Here's Brendan Mason, nice little fake and... Uh, we have too many men, Rochester oh with too many men. That's I'm just not sure why they would blow the whistle there. Right, because right. that's a penalty go going against the Grizzlies. Why would they stop it? Mason had a coast right up the right wing. He was, yeah, he had a, they had a great opportunity to get a scoring chance. I'm not sure why they blew the whistle there. Yeah, that's a, that, that was a mistake for sure. So it looks like they will go to the power play as they're gonna take Garrett Smith and put him in the box. And they'll go to the power play. Haven't had many of them here so far this afternoon. Hawk along the end wall, far side. Now right doorstep, one timer taken there by Paul and the save made by Backstrom. Boy, he is good. Held in at the blue line. Now DeRosa bumps a chill skater left wing and it'll make it into the neutral zone. There's Dent, fed it ahead. Here is Escobar. Now stick handling up the slot. Vanderhoven, he'll chase it from the circle back to Dent near point. Dent banks it off the wall down low. 
Now Fenn along the end wall to kiss Matulin in the far corner. Backhand puts it along to the near corner boards now. High camp not able to clear the first time, but it's sent up the wall and all the way down into the Cooley region chill end. 1-10 remaining on the power play. 8-40 remaining in the second period. 1-0 in favor of Rochester. Dent comes out near side of the net. Sent up left wing to kiss Matulin. Goodell, cross ice, knocked down by Heitkamp. Pitched ahead left wing, and it'll be dumped in here by the Grizzlies. Good penalty kill for them, 50 seconds left on the power play. Dent with a puck, comes out from behind the net, right side to left wing. Nice drop pass to Felix. Felix back to kiss Matulin, off the left wing wall. He'll chase the puck back behind the net, but it'll be Parker who gets to it first. Now the Grizzlies bounce a soft one ahead, and they catch up with the puck. Here's a chance, shot on net. Nita with a save, denying Haney, who came up with a quick snapper there from just inside the far circle. Chill with a good opportunity on the other end of the ice there on the power play. They had a wide open. It took him a little while to get it off, but the fact of the matter is if he just maybe keeps it lower, keeps it at his feet, the goalie's trying to get there. He's moving, so the best spot to probably keep that is just lower on the ice. Uh, probably going to lift his stick as he's moving as well. So don't always go high. It's not always the best spot to go. Sometimes just keep it nice and uh, low to the ice. And it'll be sent around to the near boards where the Grizzlies, oh, Parker coughed it up in the corner. Now it's guessed to Shepard. 16 seconds left on the power play. To Shepard, to Mason. Cross ice looking for Gargaro. Now it's picked up here. By the chill, drop back to DeShepard. Right wing, Mason, back to DeShepard. Boy, the forecheck on here for the Grizzlies. Now there's a stretch that'll bounce off of uh, McKinch, and still not able to come up with a good solid controller. DeShepard. Got a penalty coming here. Held that puck in now. Yeah, Nato racing back to the bench. Chill trying to maintain possession, but it'll be touched up by Gavin Gunderson, and back to the power play go the Cooley region chill. They really looked like they were on the penalty kill as they were bottled up nicely by that Grizzlies forecheck. Yeah, it's aggressive. You know, they Rochester plays aggressive pretty much everywhere on the ice, so you've got to be able to move the puck quick, and you, sometimes you've got to be able to relieve it to the other side. Move the puck laterally a little, laterally a little bit in order to spread things out. Luke McKinch will serve the penalty. And off the draw comes to Pollitt, who sends it back down low. Out of the corner, feed up high, slot by Dent, rips it just wide left. Now Pollitt along the near boards. To the corner, chip behind the net, kiss Matulin, helped it back the other direction. They continue to do battle behind the goaltender Backstrom. Now wide open there, Pollitt with a shot, saved by Backstrom. Again, the chill feed, Dent, Dent, right point. Dent slings it over to Pollitt, near point. Back to Dent, who moves closer, his shot is blocked, and the Grizzlies, oh, they had a chance for a breakaway there, but nice job by the chill to keep the puck in the attack zone. One twelve left here on the power play. Pollitt, left wing wall, sent it down into the corner. Fed back, high slot, Dent with a shot, and that'll come right back to his stick. And luckily no tripping call, I think he just fell. Here's Pollitt with a puck, center circle. Left wing, it's Kiss Matulin. Stick handling around, sends it up to Wycheck. Wycheck up ended, had his leg pulled out from under him and no penalty called. Here's Nadal from the bottom of the near circle. Got it up to Dent, 40 seconds left on the power play. Here's a chance for failing, it came off his stick though. Not able to get a shot off. And the Grizzlies will clear it down all the way again. Nadal out behind his net. Off to Dent, who skates back and forth behind his goaltender. Oh, and DeRosa with a good job of stealing the puck, but the chill get it back. Here's Felix comes out with DeRosa behind him. Stole the puck, shot on net. Nadal with a kick save. They have to have a little quicker movement to get away from DeRosa, because he is fast. Stretch pass up ahead. Connects to Wycheck. Drop pass. Now back to Wycheck again with the screen set up. He shoots and scores! Joey Wycheck with a huge goal. And here's what Coach is going to say. See what happens when you keep the puck close to the ice? Exactly. I knew that exactly. <laughs> exactly. I can see it in his mind. It's, <laughs> it's another one of those shots. Keep it low sometimes. Make the goalie move his feet a little bit to make a, make a save, and that's exactly what happened Coach there. Ebner referred to it earlier. It's You keep it low. It's a hard save for a goalie when they got to move. 
Hey, Joe, what do you know? A little drop pass there, and he clanked it off the iron. Bar down and in. Joey Wycheck's seventh goal of the season, and a huge one indeed. Off the draw. I'll tell you, Rochester does a really nice job of blocking shots, so I'll tell you that. Yes, they do. There's Heitkamp, sent it off left wing. Tied up 1-1, 508 left here in the second. Taken behind the net, dangling is Olsen. Olsen makes a nice move on Robertson. Tars the front of the net, saved by Nato. Had the post totally pinned. Now an opening, and the slot hopped over the stick of Haney, but the net comes off and he get the whistle. That's one of those plays, I don't know why you would even try to make at that point. I mean, he tries picking the puck up off his stick, the old Michigan play, and, and throwing it in that way. Just keep the puck moving, get it back to your defenseman, spread the chill out. They were caught running around a little bit. You probably have a better opportunity. Joey Wycheck, seventh goal of the season, assisted by Jefferson Coffin, his fifth assist, and Brennan Faley, who had that pretty drop pass, his 23rd assist. That was a power play goal, just had a couple seconds left on that power play. Puck comes to the fireboards, Hayes. Hayes sent it down to Fodstad. Now Robertson trying to get it as well as gets to Shepper as they team up defensively. Now it comes to Vanderhoven. Vanderhoven gets through Robertson. He'll get it up left wing. Looking for Gargaro, that didn't happen. And now back the other way come the Grizzlies. Here's Fodstad, shot, hit a leg, never made it to the goaltender. Kiss Matulin back behind the chill net. 419 left into the neutral zone. Looking for Kiss Matulin. Bouncing puck, knocked down by the Grizzlies, then knocked back to the circle by the chill. Dump in here by Rochester. They want a line change. Here's to Shepard. Stretch pass off the left wing wall. Kiss Matulin's pass was knocked away, and now the Grizzlies two Matulin. on one. Here they are for the far circle. What a play defensively by Gesta Shepard. Huge play. By the net. One time where they whiff. Regal had a wide open chance. Now the Grizzlies are really working the puck around. Here's the pass by Gunderson, stolen away by Vanderhoven. Up left wing, here comes Sammy. Sammy taking it towards center, and it comes off his stick. He'll try to get it back. Oh, <laughs> he's too big to knock down that way. <laughs> he was able to take that hit. And now the Grizzlies back in. Nice work by Dent. Knocked the puck, but here's a chance. Low snapper taken and just wide off the stick of Regal. Now it's Escobar. Marco. And that puck taken away, and here come the Grizzlies. From the corner, Regal. Working along with Newman. Pass was out to Wilms. Wilms slings it back to the far point. McKinch, he'll wind up. Shot, nice kick saved by Nado. Not much vision there, but he was able to get it right at the last second with a kick. Now again, they come. Wilms from his knee, shot on net. Might have caught part of the side of the net as well. Newman again, boy, the Grizzlies are buzzing. 21 to 13, the shot's an eight shot advantage. 2.45 left here in the second period. Here comes Brennan Mason, pinned up against the left wing wall. Behind the net, loose puck picked up by Jesper Hoffling. Hoffling stretching the neutral zone, went off a Rochester skater, Newman. Now behind the net, it's Wilms. Wilms couldn't get the centering pass, dead hits him afterwards. Now to the near corner of the Chile. Nice work by Pollitt. As he locks Newman up. Now oh, a quick shot blocked by Dent. Good work by the chill defense. Oh, Pollock got hit with a stick up high by Newman. Now from the far circle. Nadal the save of the stick. Looking for the backhand. Nadal and Dent on top of the puck. Blow the whistle. They covered it up. And finally they do get the whistle. 2.06 left here in the second period. Wondering how long they were going to take to finally blow the whistle and stop play. You know, well, it was clearly underneath they, Dent in the goal. They may be calling a delay a game here. No, he was there. He saw it. The ref was on it the whole way. He's just nope, going to tell nope. Coach why he's not Perfect. making the call. He didn't cover it with yes, his hand. He didn't cover it. He didn't cover it with his hand. He covered it with his body because he got knocked down. So, Well, it was under Dent is what it yeah. was, and the goaltender yeah, right. got on top of him. So if the goaltender's on top of the guy with the puck, isn't that good enough? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> This is radio, or they can't see us, but <laughs> my face should have said everything to you. <laughs> Kiss for Tulin. Tried to send it off right wing. Coffin tapped it ahead for Vanderhoven. It's a good thing they can't see. Yeah, it's a good thing they can't. I think Johnny might have showed us a couple times here, and that was probably enough for anyone who's on hockey TV asking for their money back. Here come the Grizzlies. Well, you got a minute and 40. 
left in the period. You just got to make some simple plays. Chip it out, chip it in. You're looking tired a little bit. They've yep. got to just solve this. That shot on net was handled by Nadeau, and he's got a skater in front of him. That was Garrett Smith, and he wasn't thrilled about it. Well, you never let him in the paint there, so. No, no. That's got, you got to get your defenseman to steer those guys out of there, right? Got to talk to the defenseman coach on that one. <laughs> yeah, we don't let them in there. No, you don't want them in there. But you got to be smart about it. Right. 132. Oh, yeah, I remember uh, Remember Adam Carlson in that boy. Anyone in his crease, and they're going to get it. <laughs> he was probably the feistiest goalie I can remember on our teams. If we're going to walk back down memory lane. And obviously, <laughs> he became a really good one. High camp with the puck inside the Rochester end. Set up behind the goaltender. Clock ticking down to a minute remaining here in the second period. A 1-1 hockey game. An 11 shot edge for Rochester as they take it up the right wing. In around one defender and then try to get around Pollitt. Come back behind the net. Picked up in the corner, Peyton Hart. Hart, one timer, soft, easy save for Nadal as Brennan Felig will flip it past Heitkamp's high stick and all the way down for an icing. 40 seconds left here in the second period. It is 1-1. They're going to have to solve the D-zone coverage of finding that third guy. He's high, so I think they're a little confused on who needs to go out and play him because you, got, you have your strong side wing there, but he can't play him because he's worried about puck, pucks coming out. Weak side guy is net front. He can't. So at some point they're going to have to solve that little issue or it's going to hurt him again. They work it to the far corner. And that was Haney who coughed it up. Now he'll get it back on his stick. He scores, I think. That should be, oh, they're saying no goal. I think that puck was in. No whistle yet. Finally a whistle. That was in. And a skirmish. It looked like it went in and out. Our perspective is about as good a one as you're going to get. That hit the back of the net. It hit the back. That piping along the back end of the net and then right back out. That was definitely, if you were Coach Chris Ratzloff, you... You know, you're not gonna oh, be he's able to, losing it over there right now. Yeah, you're not going to be able to call a review, but, you, you know, the goal judge turned the light on, but the official waved it off. They'll have a little discussion here, the official and the goal judge, and he's going to talk to the goal make judge. A final decision. It's that simple. They're going to come out and talk to the goal judge. And you see fans down below debating, did it go in or did it not? I'm glad they don't come up and ask me. No goal, Schaefer. And That'll be interesting to see. We've got the end zone on it. You'll get a chance to maybe take a look at it. <laughs> I, I, know, I know there was a high school game earlier in the year that the two of you said it was absolutely in, and I know Coach Franzini said it wasn't. So yeah, and, then we went, and, it, yeah. and it was in. <laughs> no, it wasn't. The <laughs> puck comes all the way back to the point. Shot towards the net, and Pollitt. We'll send it off the left wing wall and all the way down. No icing as Brennan Mason hustled down. He'll take a shove as the clock expires. Dent is having words right now. They might have something going on here with Fodstad. And the linesman stands between the two as it gets very chippy towards the end of the period, obviously. Well, you knew it would. I mean, it's just the tension's going to build here. And I can guarantee you Rochester's going to come out and hit everything that moves. They're going to be that banging. Period. They are. And... Uh, <laughs> The way this period ends, you know, we see what we believe is a goal for the Rochester Grizzlies. They say no goal. Obviously, words expressed amongst the players, as you know, we just scored on you, and then it gets feisty, and it'll get feistier in the third. Well, yeah, you're definitely going to say that. If I'm Rochester, I'm going to chirp the chill all day long on stuff like that, and, and vice versa. It's just part of the game today. You know, kids are going to talk, and... That's the fun part. That is. That is the fun part. Two goals scored in the period. No scoring in the first. The Rochester Grizzlies get on the board first. 9.37 in. Hunter Wilms scores his 12th of the season. Lucas Newman picks up his 23rd assist. Jesper Hoffling with his 25th assist. Joey Wycheck scoring to tie the game up. A beautiful shot on a drop pass. His 7th of the season. Jefferson Coffin picks up his 5th assist. Brendan Felig his 23rd. That was a power play goal. And that's where we're at after two periods of play. We'll take a break. Be back with the Kirk Path State Farm Insurance Final Alaska Intermission Report. Yes, we will have one this time. I'm not going anywhere. We'll take a couple of walks down memory lane, talk about 
Uh, some things that have happened over the last 10 years and some of the memories, it's coming up here on the Cooley Region Sports Network and Hockey TV. Noble Insurance Service, building strong relationships to secure your future. Whether you need homeowner's insurance, auto insurance, life insurance, health insurance, or commercial insurance, we work with a variety of companies. That ensures you get the protection you need. We're committed to creating a partnership so that as your needs change, your coverage keeps pace. Call Noble Insurance Service and let's create a plan personalized just for you. Burrito artistry, two words you rarely see together. At BA Burrito Company, they're words to live by. Get your BA madly mixed flavors any way you like. Handcrafted burrito artistry at the Copeland Store in La Crosse can be delivered right to your door through the Eat Street and DoorDash apps on your computer or smartphone. BA Burrito can also cater to any of that and is the official Iceberg Fan Deck Caterer of the Cooley Region Show. BA Burrito Company. Check out the full menu, daily specials, and catering online at baburritoco.com. Waste Management of Wisconsin is your local choice for all of your collection and disposal needs. From collection and recycling to state-of-the-art landfill operations, at Waste Management, Think Green is a way of life. It means commitment to customer satisfaction and long-term relationships. It means cleaner, safer communities. And it means you receive high-quality service second to none. Their goal is to be the single source for all of your collection and disposal needs. Sign up today and see why more people choose Waste Management than any other. Contact Dean Lounsbro, D-L-O-U-N-S-B-R at WM.com. 608-518-1720. Been missing that taste of Chicago-style Italian beef, Vienna beef, hot dogs, and other Chi-Town classics? Well, I'm here to tell you. Grab two tree, your friends, and head to Mario, Chicago beef and hot dogs in La Crosse. Just a short drive, and you, my friend, are enjoying a juicy Chicago-style Italian beef sandwich, Chicago dog depression dogs, fresh cut fries, and more. Mario's Chicago Beef and Hot Dogs, 118 South 3rd Street, La Crosse. Stop in today or have it delivered with Bite Squad and Eat Street Apps. I'm a mother of a teenager, and when a child is learning how to drive, you want to turn it over to someone who's patient. Enhanced Driving Institute teaches your child how to drive responsibly, not just pass a test. He does a lot more than teaching to pass the test, but also teaching just conscious driving. Class registration is open right now and filling fast. I don't want my daughter to just pass her test. I want her to be a good driver for life. EDI-WI.com, Enhanced Driving Institute. For many people, one of the largest assets they'll have at retirement may be a work-related retirement account. Investment decisions you make throughout your working life could dramatically affect the value of your account when you decide to quit working. How do you decide your account allocations? How do you know when to make changes? Brent Peterson at Interstate Wealth can help. For help in understanding your work-related retirement account, contact Brent Peterson at interstatewealth.com. Investment advisory services offered through Virtue Capital Management, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Interstate Wealth. Wealth LLC is independent of Virtue Capital Management. Welcome to the Kurt Paff State Farm Insurance Model Asking Intermission Report. We got a good one. 1-1 one, one hockey game after two periods of play. The Cooley Region Chill and Joey Wycheck scoring to tie the game up after the Grizzlies were able to take a 1-0 lead about midway through the second period. Uh, tight checking game, shots 29 for the Grizzlies, 14 for the Cooley Region Chill after two periods. Uh, breaking it down in terms of shots per period, we've got the numbers for you. 20 in that second period for Rochester, so they turned it up a notch, and five for the Chill. They had nine in the first, both teams did, and uh, that's where we're at. We got a couple of penalties assessed at the very end of the period. Joey Fonstad will get two minutes and uh, Dylan Dent going to get two minutes. And looks like uh, it was roughing minors that will be induced to both of those gentlemen. As that's where we'll start things out in our third period. Glad you're with us here on Cooley Region Sports Network. Whether you're just listening or whether you're watching on Hockey TV. I've got uh, Mark Thorne, Dean Lonsboro, Mike Gargaro's back up here too. We're going to want to talk to him. But you know, guys, you, uh, you've, been, you've been with me from the beginning in terms of Hockey when the Omni Center had the Cooley Region Chill uh, as the NAHL franchise for a couple of years before Michelle Bryant uh, had moved the team here down to Green Island Ice Arena. And uh, obviously, you know, it, 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 you, get, you get different crowds. It's, you know, I'm from Chicago, and 
you know, you have to drive a long way to go to different things. And it, it always kind of surprised me a little bit, the difference in, in the, uh, the people in the crowds when it moved from the Omni Center to Green Island Ice Arena. Now, there were some of those loyals that still came down, but there's not as many of those people. You don't see them as often. Uh, when you change the location, it only takes 20 minutes to drive to. Why do you think that is? Go ahead. You're okay. You're good. No, I, it, I don't know for sure that it's the drive. What is um, it? it? Convenience. Um, getting through town, a lot of times you've got a, on, on a weekend, um, just getting from, from on Alaska to the south side of La Crosse, and people that drive it every day, it's not like Chicago. It's not like Minneapolis, and it's not like Milwaukee. But it is a convenience locally in their brain on that north-south north, north, north corridor on how to get there. And I think that affects what, what people do. Yeah, obviously it's a, you know, it's a little bit of a different position where this I mean, scenic, you look out here at the river, it's, it's gorgeous. I mean, you, you walk out this back door and you look at the scenery, and this is a gorgeous location. Obviously, parking, that, you know, that's a kind of a, a situation. And I guess I'm, I'm curious, you know, if, if, if it does go to become uh, tennis courts, which is what, uh, you know, rumor has it it's going to become, where are you going to put the parking with the tennis courts? Because there's still not going to be parking, is there? Well, no, they're, they're anticipating 13 courts are going to fill up this area, the park in and around this area. So parking will continue to be an issue down here. You know, Dean's right. The, the ease and convenience to get down here. There's really two ways to get to this rink. You're either coming down by Gunderson or you're coming down through the industrial park. Neither of them are very scenic in that regard. And it's just three roads are going north and south. And that's, believe it or not, in a small town like that, that will stop people will come from here. The other thing that I, and I've been a big proponent of this, is that, you know, it's not just parking, it's lighting. I mean, you got to light this place up. You go up to the Omni Center, it's bright, it's lit. People feel very comfortable being outside in the wintertime. You come down here in the wintertime, it's awful dark. and You don't see a lot of families it, coming down it, it can because be of that reason. In the, in the back of this building, it can be pretty rough, dark, and slippery. Yep. That, there's no question about that. But, uh, you know, Tim, what are you going to say? I'm not buying any of this stuff. <laughs> Just come on down watch a good hockey game, for gosh sakes. It's the south side of lacrosse. Uh, you're talking about a West Salem guy and a North Sider, for Christ's sake. You, get oh, down yeah, to yeah, the hockey the, game and you, come you, watch. <laughs> it's it's not that far. You live about it's, five minutes from this, right? Well, that's true, but I go to Alaska for practice all the time I used to, so it's not that long of a drive. I could walk it's, to the Omni Center for the my The south house. side of lacrosse is not bad. It's They all come down no. to Gunderson Lutheran anyways to get go to the doctor, for most of them. So it's not that bad. It's just a matter of getting out and making sure you spread the word on hockey and presenting a good product on the ice, which it, which the chill have done. Sure. No, I agree with you 100% on that. Uh, Mikey, do you have anything to weigh in on? The, no, nothing there. Hey, uh, but while you're here, and I don't know if you if you're if you're are you prepared to talk to us, Mike Argero? Mike, you were there at the very beginning when this franchise first uh, decided that they were going to move from Mason City to come up and play at the Omni Center in on Alaska. You were involved at the uh, grassroots, if you will, with Mark Motes at that time. Uh, was there other options? Were they thinking of other places? Uh, tell us a little bit about how it ended up here. Yeah, no, I, didn't, I don't know if they had other options. I just know they weren't coming to terms there in North Iowa. And at the Omni Center at the time, we were looking for additional revenue, able to rent ice during the day, increase concessions during the evening, filled up some more ice at night. You know, everybody was up in arms that we weren't going to have enough ice at the Omni Center. Well, I can tell you now when you drive by on a Tuesday or Thursday night, if there isn't a high school game, it's dark by 8.30. So it's gone backwards a little bit since we've brought the chill to town. It's interesting that that would be the case. Although it sounds like they get lots of tournaments and lots of other things in there, but it, it sounds like they're, they're already, they already took the uh, first, the big, the big sheet yeah, out. Big, Rick won one out last week. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's disappointing. It used to be the first weekend in March because we used to host at the youth hockey level a state tournament, but they must be finding other revenue sources elsewhere or holding it to a different uh, financial wherewithal, I guess. What's even more disappointing is that I was going to call the men's league championship and semifinal, and, and the ice was taken yeah. out, so yeah. I couldn't do it there. Yeah, we're on rink twos. Wednesday night at seven o'clock championship game. You know, I know you were gonna. You, we got numbers and everything on it with Cooley Bank as sponsors. We put numbers on so we could have you come and call. We give you a yeah, roster, but we right. can't even do that. But after 20 years, I finally have a hard line at the Omni Center 
like I have here to be able to stream stuff without worrying whether the internet's going to go out on me or whatever with a MiFi signal. And in here they take it out and I can't, I can't do it. I mean, it would have been so much fun to watch you guys, I mean, and then have players that, whose teams are out doing the, uh, the commentary from behind the glass. I mean, it, it would be, it would have a not for kids listed on YouTube. Yes, that would be, and, a, and not safe for work, the NSFW as well. <laughs> yes, but, right. well. Settle down, Abner. Don't you can't comp comment on it at all unless you're going to come out and play. I don't. No, no, I'm not complimenting on the men's thing, but I want to go back to what we were talking about beforehand because Rick knows for sure that I've been vocal on on this program before. Absolutely. It's just it, hockey in this area is just it's starting to go backwards, and there's no question about that. And and we have to have people out there in all associations, in all programs, at the high school level, with school administrators, with people running the association to quit thinking about themselves all the time about my son my team how can this program it needs to go what is the best interest of hockey in not only on alaska not only home and not only lacrosse not only west salem we all need to come together and come up with ideas and plans to help grow the game again and get out of the mindset of what's it's about my son or my daughter and that's the biggest problem we're all having around here I mean, I was involved in the lacrosse program years ago when I heard a parent say, I don't want any more kids because it'll affect my son's ice time. Those kinds of attitudes got to go away. I was at a high school, at a game, youth game years ago, I think we talked about this, where I asked about a kid on the ice and, and one of the parents from Holman turned to me and said, you don't need to know him because he's going to Holman High School. So those are the attitudes right. and the people that we have to get out of the associations and right. get the people into the associations at the higher levels that are in it for the best interest of everybody and not just their program. I think we all are going to do a hallelujah on that one. Well, Amen. And, and once Amen. again, hallelujah. I may it may upset a few people, but somebody needs to have this discussion with everybody. Programs are going down, numbers are going down, quality's going down. Uh, one more thing I want to do here before we uh, get to third period action, and that is, you know, we talked about the beginnings, Mike, when when uh, when Mark Motes first brought the team. Oh, that hurt my ears just a little bit. That's a that was Ebner fumbling the headset microphone, just so you know, because you can't see us. Uh, but you know, obviously they, they came. You know, the the Motes decided to bring the team here to Onalaska, and we played at the Omni Center. But then uh, a couple years later, uh, you know, many people maybe don't even realize, but uh, Michelle Bryant saved this franchise from from not being here anymore. And it's been going, you know, here at the Green Island Ice Arena for multiple years. And, you know, everything's kind of hanging a little bit in the balance right now based off of a city decision and what's going to happen here. Uh, but nonetheless, I mean, there wouldn't have been this chill junior hockey team had she not stepped in. No, she was with the, uh, she worked with the Park and Rec for the first couple years. And then it just got to a spot where it seemed to make more sense for her to be down here financially, which you can't. You can't, how do you fault somebody for trying to make a profit or sure. at least break even for something? You can't fault that. And you got to be willing to work with each side of, you know, the chill has to work with Park and Rec. Park and Rec has to work with the chill, and it's got to be win-win for both. And the contract was kind of set up like that. When we started, the Omni Center used to be under the purview of the CDA. It changed over the course of those first five years where it went to Park and Rec, and that's where things they started to change a little bit as well. Yeah, and, uh, you know, obviously... Uh, it, it seems like things are improving in terms of uh, sales and such at the Omni Center, as you see a lot of banners up, and now uh, things are looking good in that aspect. I, I you know, in, in terms of on Alaska, you, you wonder if, if they're going to, uh, you know, have more ice time or less, and it seems like there's been less and less. And but it is, and even you know, you, you get a couple of the high school guys here talk, and I mean, go ahead, you can. It's part of my life up here. That, that sound. People only got three minutes left to listen to us. Yeah, what they just all realized. Well, the other thing we've got to do is we've got to find a way to keep Green Island open. I have no idea what's happened with it. I've had a few talks with city people from Lacrosse and those kinds of things that have contacted me, but we've got to find a way to keep this building open. They There's had a meeting. No question about they, that. They did have a meeting Friday with the rink management company here, but I don't, I've not heard how that played out. So. I, and I and I take a little bit more um, personal because my dad and my dad's company built this arena yeah, initially. I agree. So yeah, you, you should, it, yeah. it needs to stay open and we need to find a way to continue to increase the numbers in lacrosse hockey as well so that eventually down the road I would hate to see 
the high schools not be together, but it's one day hopefully lacrosse is able to go on their own again. Well, and uh, that's a decision being uh, made here very soon, whether there's still going to be a co-op between Onalaska and lacrosse, and, and there, there's no answer on that yet either. No, and that goes back to my discussion a few minutes ago. Of just We need to make decisions that are in the best interest of everybody and not just one specific association or high school. Well, this has been an informative powwow, I would say, gentlemen. Yeah, thanks for letting me come up and be part of it. <laughs> of course. You're one of the founding fathers. Uh, Mike Gargaro. Thanks, Ricky. Nice job. Hey, nice job on your award. That was great oh, to see. It was fun was to watch. Incredible moment. Boy, I tell you, that was so, I mean, uh, it'll go down uh, in my my list of, of one of my favorite moments in my lifetime without any question. And I'm, I'm honored and I'm thankful to have uh, great friends like you guys and, and the hockey community since I, I got involved here when I came in 2000. And, um, you know, a couple of years off of, of maybe not doing uh, some of the, the high school games. And then when the chill came in and in 2010 then uh, you know that was a 10-year run but boy the high school games have been a big part of my life as well and uh, obviously you guys all involved in that area right is the pool open later today with that 50 <laughs> degrees or with, not with 50 degree weather you think we might be able to jump in well, you gotta keep it at 80 it's like a hot tub anyway so <laughs> it feels great no matter what time of it's year it's got it is, the right? cover on it right now but i can't wait for those days it's a gorgeous day here in the cooley region okay. well, all right thank you very much luck, let's, the way, guys. let's get back to hockey thanks to mike gargaro of course we got the crew up here, Mark Thorne, Tim Ebner, Dean Lonsborough, as we meet at center ice. I gotta change my little scoreboard here and get the third period as we start out action at Green Island Ice Arena where the Cooley Region Chill take it into the attack zone. Starting nice out with a couple nice moves there. Oh, an opening on the near doorstep there. Starting out four on four, Rick, we ended up with two penalties at the end of that period, which we anticipated. Yeah, Escobar had a golden opportunity. There's one sent just wide. Backstrom flailed at it as it went wide. Now the Shepard left it back up at the far point, knocked into the neutral zone. <coughs> As Tim mentioned, we told you about those two penalties, Dylan Dent and Joey Fodstad roughing penalties that were assessed at the end of the period. Here they come, Olsen with a shot, save made by Nadeau as it comes to the far boards. Now the chill, left wing to center. In across the blue line to Shepard, shot batted away by Backstrom, still sitting in front. Chill trying to stuff it in, and they blow the whistle, it came loose. Under Backstrom, he only had it for a brief moment, but that whistle came right away. Very fortunately, he gave up a nice juicy rebound there. That the uh, chill player just a little hesitant to get there in time. Yeah, we're definitely off the blocker. That was the biggest surprise. Usually, when you get off the blocker, you off to the sideboards real easy. That's coming from a guy who plays goalie in men's league. <laughs> That's what they I'm say. I'm not anyways. touching that. I'm not touching it. I'll let Thorny <laughs> handle that one because I was about to. Face off and then sent into the corner in the Rochester end. Behind the net, Parker sent it up left side. Now it's McKinch. McKinch into the attack zone, trying to get around Robertson. There's a backhand shot saved by Nadal. Still on the near doorstep and sent back up top. Parker. Parker lost it. Wycheck, who has had a strong afternoon. Now it's DeRosa, drops it back. That's McKinch. Poked, he keeps it on his stick though. Sends it cross ice. Drop down low, looking for DeRosa, covered by Wycheck. Now it's Robertson with the puck for the chill. Put it up right wing to Vanderhoven. Towards center, uh oh, it's Parker who keeps that puck in. Parker at the right point, chipped over near point. McKinch winds up, the shot, oh, redirect by DeRosa, sent just wide left. Now fed back, one-timer, shot wide left again. And Robertson trying to do battle behind the net. Grizzly is putting the pressure on, but finally cleared to the neutral zone. And those penalties just about set to expire. It's Parker fed to the far circle, and the chill able to send it back the other way. Two on one opportunity from the top of the far circle. Shot on net, saved by Backstrom. And it looks like he got on top of it, or is caught and inside caught the sleeve, in, yep. I think. Caught yeah. inside his blocker. Old goalie trick. I can see. Whatever it takes. 1-1 one, one the score. We're just underway here in period number three. Shots are 32 to 17 in favor of the road team. They win the draw. Here's Fodstad. Dangerous. Look at the space up left wing. Fodstad into the zone. He'll put it up high as a stick got in front of that one and rode up out 
a play. Perfect play by the chill. Let him go. If he's going to go outside like that, and he gets it, he gets it on the dots to the even to the middle of the ice, and he goes all the way to the outside. If he's going to go there, let him go there. Just stay, keep him to the outside, and, and good stick position there, and deflect a shot. And our thanks to Johnny Jones, who's with us here running the switcher, and uh, our second camera. Johnny has been with the Cooley Region Chill as a volunteer and host parent since the very beginning. He bleeds Cooley Region Chill blue. It's the Rochester Grizzlies with the puck now. Circle to circle, Flanders. Back off right side. Noonan put it up the right wing. Haney dumps it down. Now the puck comes behind the net. Worked up to Brennan Mason. His cross ice pass was tipped. Now it's Coffin. Knocked back to a stick at the far circle. Cross ice off the near boards and dumped in by Brennan Mason. Here's Noonan with a stretch, left wing. Oh, nice hit there in the near wall by Dent. And again, they battle in the neutral zone. Noonan slapped the puck in. The race for it, Gunderson can't get to it first. Left sack, not able to work it up the near wall. Gunderson lost it. Now oh, back and forth, it gets put towards the front, kicked back into the corner. Now worked back behind the net, Gargaro has his man pinned. The Grizzlies, fed back near point, Heitkamp. His shot redirected wide over to the corner. And the Grizzlies continue to keep this puck in the attack zone. That went just wide behind the chill net. Here's Dents, stretch pass, looking there for Robertson. Robertson playing up on forward, and he collides there with Olsen and knocked him down, then kicked it out of the corner towards the front of the net, and Backstrom able to push it away from Gargaro. Gargaro dropped it back near point, Coffin down low, Vanderhoven out in front, and oh, held up at the far point to Shepard with a screen save, and Backstrom makes a second one as Vanderhoven tried to poke it in, but it was contested by a stick. Another chance in front for the chill, then another, and it's blocked by Gunderson, and back the other way. Come the Grizzlies. Cody Regal. Oh, a collision there. And guess the Shepard pops right back up. The Shepard like a missile. And the chill zone tied up in the corner. 15 17, left here, third period, 1 1. Shots 32 20, 12 shot edge here for Rochester. Top team in the Central Division. Shot goes wide off the glass in the corner. And Parker tries to get one off the right wing wall, blocked by the chill, held up, point to point. There's a shot, save, Nate out, rebound, Newman, and not able to put it in. Newman again, dropping it back. Parker able to hold it at the far point. Parker then slings it along the blue line, McKinch. McKinch takes a low shot, that's redirected up into the pads. Up, Nate out, now back behind, they try to wrap around, and again, it's Nate out, coming up large. In net, another outstanding effort by Devin Nadow. A lot of sustained pressure down in front of that net. A lot yeah. of pressure on him. Yeah, no question. They had a couple chances out of all that stuff, but I, I, I really don't mind some of it. They're, Chill's doing a better job so far of staying on the defensive side, hoping to get a, a break, a bounce, something, and spring them loose for a goal here. They've been pretty pretty patient this period so far. They're getting a late substitution here as Sam Vanderhoven will step in. Out in front to get a body in case a quick shot off the draw, but it comes to the corner away from DeRosa to the near boards. And they're tangled up along the near wall. Finally worked out here by the Grizzlies. Drop back to McKinch. McKinch, easy stick save made by Nadow. In the corner, fed back. McKinch again, left point. Makes a move around Vanderhoven, put it to the one-timer in the slot, blocked. And drop back again as Parker sent it to the end boards. Chill there, Brandwin Pollitt. Pollitt then tried to clear, couldn't. Chill get a second opportunity. Wide check to Kiss Matulin, still held in by Parker. Now DeRosa, he'll get hit off the puck by Pollitt, and the Chill will clear it down all the way, but only to get a little bit of a breather as the action has been fast and furious down in the chill defensive zone here for a while. Rochester's looked just very confident all the time in, in our defense in our offensive zone down there. They just look very confident the whole time. Do you see that? Yeah, I mean, they're, they should be. <laughs> what a, they're the, one of the top teams well, in the league, and, 
and they're strong on their skates. They make good decisions, and they're just continue to put pressure on. Obviously, St. Louis Junior Blues fans probably watching this game on hockey TV today, and they had uh, done a number on Granite City, beating them handily in two games, and now have the second place spot. She'll look to answer with a victory here and take the lead back. That shot goes wide, was blocked down in front as the puck comes back into the near corner. Whoever holds the second seed holds all the playoff games. That's the agreement between the St. Louis Junior Blues and Cooley Region Chill, and they will square off one way or another. Top of the circle, oh, that was gonna be a pass to Escobar. Back door on the near doorstep, but it did not happen as it gets knocked to the far boards there and dumped in here by the Grizzlies. Haney will try to get to it. Uh, it gets past Coffin Stick. Haney not able to do much with it though. And now here come the chill. Up the right wing, getting around a check, but coming off the puck was Brennan Mason. Held in here by Felix. Felix with a shot blocked there by the defense. It bounces off the fireboards. Escobar. No, it'll be Heitkamp who sends it back behind. Noonan streaking up the left side. Noonan into the neutral zone. They'll continue on in, bank it off the left wing wall. Dent gets in the lane there as they battle along the end boards. And Dent gets knocked down, but then the other skater goes down as well. Dent not happy about it as he's going after Regal. They both knocked each other down a couple times. Now loose puck comes behind the net. To Robertson from Gargero and all the way down. The race is on. Good hustle. Oh, Lebsack. Lebsack, I thought, had the edge on that puck. Tim says no, he's giving me the look. He thinks no, that was definitely icing in Tim Ebner's mind. Well, they were close. I mean, they were neck and neck going right down there, but you gotta give that, uh, uh, you gotta give that, I guess, the tie to the, <laughs> tie, to the tie, tie to the team. Yeah, I guess, however yeah. you wanna say that. It, that was close, you gotta credit him for the effort that yeah. he had to try to keep that puck going and give, some, give him a little bit more of a break before going back into their D zone. A Cooley Region chill, trying to work the puck out, but boy, the Grizzlies just continue. Here's McKinch now, as he fights for it along the near boards. Gunderson trying to come in to help work it loose. Parker in the neutral zone, bounces it off the near boards and down in front of the net where the chill defense was waiting. Now backhand again by McKinch down low. Coffin picks it up, 11.35 left, third period, 1-1. Here is McKinch, off to Parker, circle to circle. McKinch now into the neutral zone, left side. Dropped in off the left wing corner board, all the way to the other side. That's where Hunter Wilms was there, and not able to do a whole lot with it. Here's a pitch ahead, here's a chance for Vanderhoven. Oh, he was trying to take it in towards the net one-handed, but McKinch got to him quick and wrapped him up in a bear hug. Newman, and Kiss Matulin. Finally, Newman takes it near side from behind his net. Now left circle. Newman cross ice, bank off the wall, picked up by McKinch. McKinch poked at there by Vanderhoven. Now a quick shot just wide of the net. It was Jesper Hoffling who's got a point in this game on an assist. And went off a skater to the far boards. Just about halfway through, period number three. One one hockey game. And the dump in, and the whistle, and a stoppage here with 10.30 left in the third period. You know, uh, Sam Vanderhoven's bullet, I will tell you this, he's a nice kid, nice young man, but when you get in a game like this, you gotta start playing with an edge. You gotta, you know, you're a big, tall kid, you gotta really bring an edge to your game, and especially in this kind of situation. Off the draw, quick shot, take it just snapped wide as Backstrom saw it go into the Far corner and sent all the way back into the chill end. Brendan Mason first to it. Worked it back into the near circle. Mason will have to pick that puck back up again. Enwall. And nice move to evade a check there by Dylan Dent, but then he gets pinned up against the boards yet again. There's a feed towards the front. Garrett Smith dropped it back. Far point, slung near point now. Heitkamp. Heitkamp went wide with it. And now it's Brennan Mason. Good and clear, Logan Olsen keeps it in. Olsen looking for a lane to shoot, and that went wide. Now it's Matt DeRosa. DeRosa shot that one across Crease and off the far boards. She'll have a lane to get it up ahead. Here's Mason, dumps it in on net. Backstrom to save. 
9.35 left. Here's Heitkamp. Right wing. Got it up. DeRosa. DeRosa's got great wheels. Gets around to Shepard. Backhand shot off the side of the net. And now along the near boards there. It's Garrett Smith and DeRosa. Gargaro picks it up. Ryan. Nice pass along the end. Well, uh-oh, came off a skater and a chance here for the Grizzlies. Boy, they just weren't able to pull the shot off. Boy, they had an opening there. And they'll turn around and throw it back in to the near corner. Sent towards the front. DeRosa backhand saved by Nadal. Oh, another huge stop by Devin Nadal. Puck comes towards Backstrom. He'll come up top of the crease. Sends it off left wing. High camp. High camp now with the puck. Back pedals at the right circle. Slings it off left wing to Haney. Haney in the neutral zone. He'll take the puck into the attack zone. Throws it off a couple of chill skaters. Bouncing puck, he'll try to retrieve it, but he'll get some help. Now back to the near point. Noonan with a shot. Gets blocked in front of its way there and cleared by the chill. Back into the neutral zone. Flanders. And off to the right side. Back to Flanders' stick. Left defenseman will send it up. The wall and caught up in some legs there. Flanders again. This time he'll dump it in. Joey Wycheck picks it up behind the chill net. Left it off to Coffin. Coffin gets bottled up behind the net right out in front. A chance and they score. Oh, bad turnover by the Cooley Region chill. And the Grizzlies make you pay. They make you pay, but a lot of that comes back down to the chill in that situation. Not only that situation there, but number of situations before that where instead of just bringing the puck up, getting the puck going up ice, they want to turn around and regroup back and go back with the puck all the time. There was probably a handful of those sequences in the last three minutes, four minutes, and it eventually bites them. That's what Rochester wants them to do is keep it deep in the zone. Instead of get it up, get it north. Yeah, unfortunately the defense got uh, bottled up behind the net and they were forced into a turnover and Grizzlies make them pay 2-1. Grizzlies with the puck. Joey Fodstad's 25th of this campaign. Porter Haney picks up his 27th assist. Now oh, it's Parker. Got it up right wing. She'll need to get one back here. Out shot 42 to 22. 20 shot edge for the Grizzlies. 730 remains. Bouncing puck just inside the blue line. And a tripping penalty is going to come up against the chill. Ouch. I think they could take both of them, actually, because a nice hold on the way down, too. We'll see if they if they take both. That would be good news. They won't. Yeah, that's guess to Shepard. You know, he's just working hard at that point. They're kind of scrambling a little bit in their D zone right now, and, and that's kind of, kind of been the story of the last five minutes of this game, or actually most of this period, even. So... This is like being up against the eight ball right now. Down two to one. Top team in the Central Division, the Rochester Grizzlies. And on the penalty kill. The good news is penalty kill has been the best in the league this year. Here's Kiss Matulin trying to clear. Not able to do so the first time. Second time. No, just held in by Heitkamp. Banked off the right wing wall. Newman set up the one-timer in the save. save made by Nado. Nice save coming across his crease and making that look easy, but... I'll tell you, when you got a slide like that, you know that's the open shot, so. Well, it's the athletic goalies that can get across and make those types of saves. What I'll are you know. saying? <laughs> Devin Nadeau had only one bad, I, I would, well, he had two games that he had uh, some trouble against the Grizzlies, but he's had some others that he was absolutely standing on his head. And uh, he's been great here today. Here come the Cooley Region Chill. Up left wing, and it's piling to the shot, just goes just wide. And now picked up here by Olsen. Olsen comes out far side behind his net, left it there for Heitkamp. Heitkamp now with a puck. And to the neutral zone, left wing, Olsen. Olsen dumps it down, puck comes around to the far corner. Escobar trying to get position. Worked off the wall, Newman the shot, saved by Nadal. Grizzlies dominating play right now. And obviously with a power play, they continue in the attack zone, Olsen. Slung point to point. Tipped ahead by Heitkamp. Feed towards the front of the net. Shot saved, Nito again. And a whistle stopping play with 6-10 left in regulation. 
So again, setting up the scenario as far as the playoffs go, we got two more regular season games. The Cooley Region Shield will head out to Alexandria. Runestone Arena, I remember going there with the team back the first couple years when they were in the NAHL before they became a uh, an NA3 team, much like the Cooley Region Chill. That's going to be fed back to Parker. Parker with a shot, and he scores, and that might be the dagger. Not a lot he could do on that. I don't think he saw it until the very end. Um, the, the defenseman just makes a really nice play. He catches it, makes the play wide, and Chill guy goes down to block it. He just steps back across uh, strong side and snaps a low shot off. Uh, NATO never saw it. He was down covering everything well, but he never saw it to him up just over his leg bag. Ninth goal of the season for Noel Parker. And it's 3-1 with 5.59 left. Well, next week we have to be Rochester Grizzlies fans. They take on the St. Louis Junior Blues, as I was getting to that point. As St. Louis needs to lose. That's simple as that. As they're going to hold on to second place here if the Chill can't pull off a late comeback. And right now, McKinch shot was blocked and bounces back into the corner. Uh, the outlet, no good. Slung down by DeRosa. And Peyton Hart put it down even further. Now work back near point where they're just cycling around. There's Parker with another shot blocked. Skating around the zone. The Chill are tired. You can just see it. That's going to be stolen away. Oh, big hit. Held in at the point. Shot. Saved Nate out. Rebound. They score. And the Grizzlies have the chill on their heels. And the Grizzlies continue to dominate Peyton Hart, the latest goal scorer. And that is number 13 on the season for him. I think you called it, Rick. They were just tired. You yes. could see it all the way through. And uh, Nate out, out of frustration, I think he broke his stick. And, Well, yeah, I mean, it, you can see it. it's been that way. It's been on that, in that zone most of the period, and they're just, they're gassed. They're not able to get the quick shifts that they need to gain their rest because they're spending too much time in their D zone. There's a hit by Sam Vanderhoven. You don't see him hit people too often. He got somebody that wasn't expecting him there. Here's Dent to Pollitt. Pollitt trying to work it out, but a lot of bodies there, not able to do it. 441 and counting here, third period. Grizzlies look to take this one and take a 5-3 series. That's a shot on net by Kisper too, and I say by Backstrom. He rarely gives up more than one goal a game, so you're lucky when you score two against Backstrom. That's pretty much the deal. Well, and the Chill have had their opportunities to do that. They had some early, they've had some in each period. It's just capitalizing on those plays. I'd have to say, Rochester's just a little bit, to me, looks a little bit more physically stronger than they are. They're physically stronger on their skates and on the rest of their body as well, upper body included in that. Of course, we're missing about 120 points in the lineup here. Makes a difference. Best and Severson out. Not going to make excuses, but I, I definitely see the, the legs are tired and the Grizzlies have just dominated play here in these last two periods. Chill, pick up the puck. Sent ahead. McCormick also out. Hasn't been on the ice tonight. In the corner, Escobar looking to get it back to Brennan Mason, but now it's Hayes. To Fodstad. Dump in. Gets to Shepard back. And the Cooley Region chill to the center circle. Across the line, Felix. Chases it into the corner, trying to get position on the puck. Nice work. Oh, just can't quite connect. As McCormick is out there now. He has not played much of this game. He's getting some late action. There's Pollitt, had his pass taken away. Dropped in behind the net by Regal. Comes all the way to the corner. Felig. Behind the net, Pollitt. Chill bottled up right now. Three minutes left. Here come the CRC. Up left wing, just not enough gas left in the tank for Felig, and he just couldn't get out of the zone. 
Olsen. Just on his pass. He'll take it in. Here's the Shepard feeding the near circle. That was blocked on its way there. Here behind the net. Sumner came off the stick of McCormick. Drop back to Shepard. Feeds Dent. His was blocked. Held to the blue line. The Shepard snaps it off just wide. That's behind the net. McCormick. McCormick hit up against the boards. Held in there by the Shepard. But goes right to Olsen's stick. And off the skate of Sumner, and he gets it back in. He takes a huge hit as he sent it in. Should have been getting a, hammered. It's going to be a fight. Absolutely should have been a penalty. He, yep. re, the ref was way out of position. He came in high with an elbow oh, right man. to the chin. And then he just started hammering on Sumner after he knocked him down, which should have been a penalty. There should have been no question. There should have yep. been an initial penalty on Rochester for the elbow yes. to the head. Logan Olson with a little late game coonery and a four to one lead. And he'll be sent. And done for the day. 2.04 left here in regulation. This will be a Rochester victory. And they're obviously already secure in their first play spot. Now, there's no reason the Till guy should be thrown out of the game. No. He got tacked. He got, first he got elbowed, then he got uh, jumped and pummeled on. The other chill guy should get the penalty for the third guy in to grab him and pull, but it shouldn't be anything major here. I mean, and I don't blame the ref in that spot, in that situation. He's way down on this end. That's where, once again, in my opinion, you need two officials yeah. calling a game like this at, all, at most levels because they just can't see the whole sheet of ice, and the trailing official would have been able to see the, the elbow high to the chin. Well, that linesman was in there pretty quick to tackle because they were rolling around and the skates were flying. That's just a dangerous situation at that point. Well, they're assessing things here. We've got 2.04 left. It will be two players getting two minute penalties, and Dylan Dent somehow is getting a penalty. I don't really know. I heard Brian Simpson say power play, but right now, I see they put the penalty up, but it will be outdone. See, they gave a roughing penalty to Dylan Dent. A double minor roughing to Logan Olson. So that's going to be the power play for the Cooley Region Show. Yeah. Understandable. I mean, like I said, the, the whole thing calms down. I don't know what it escalated after that. I mean, you can't tell from up here. I'm sure somebody said something. But the fact of the matter is it should have been the initial call for the high elbow to the chin. Yeah, usually when you see gloves coming up in towards the chin after that, there's something that was said. It's... Not, not in my world. I'm just, you're just kind of a quiet guy. You don't say anything. You take it and move on. But... That's just my take. We only got two more minutes of this, right? <laughs> yeah, there is only two more. Two more, and then uh, we have to hope that the boys can get her done out in Alexandria and hope that Rochester can take care of business against St. Louis and we'll get another home game. And who's to say, even if the Chill were to have to play all the games in St. Louis, that they couldn't get out of there with a series victory and have another series to play. But Obviously, you like to make things definite. Here's Escobar. He'll sling it out, top of the bar. Circle shot on that Backstrom, the save off the stick of Pollock. Yeah. You'd like to see uh, Vanderhoeven kind of get in front of the, take the eyes away of the goaltender, fight a little bit more, push the guy out of the way, do something. I know it's four to one game, but now starts to set the tone for the next series. There's the draw now at the far circle inside the Grizzlies end. She'll looking to get. One quick one here, but they're not going to win the draw. It's Hoffling. Yes, for Polk checked away by the Shepherd. Good work. Now into the zone comes Kiss Matulin. Sent it through the legs of the defender to the corner. After it is Escobar. Marco Escobar down there with Vanderhoven. Kiss Matulin behind the net, trying to stuff it in with the backhand. Backstrom down on top of it. And then McKinch tackles Goodell Kiss Matulin. Right after the play comes to an end. 127 left here in the third. Well, right, you're right, he's got to get down in front, take the eyes away, create havoc at that point. Face off here at the far circle. Down the Grizzlies end. That's going to get into the neutral zone. Back is Gesta Shepard. 
to Schapper. Bank pass. Looking there for Goodell Kismetulin. He couldn't pick it up. And Flanders will just dump it in. Pollitt. The corner bounced off the skate of DeShepper right out in front, and uh, I think that was Nadal with the save, unless it got blocked. <coughs> uh, it's the Cooley Region Chill slinging across ice. In right wing, Escobar. Marco to Vanderhoven, near circle. Low shot just sent wide. Hoffman looking for Escobar. Now it's Vanderhoven down the far corner, fed to the front, and just came off Escobar's stick. Back the other way they come, Peyton Hart. He's got one in this contest. To the front, looking for DeRosa, just wide. A Cooley region chill, trying to work out of their own end. Turnover, though. Here comes Hart to the front of the net, shoots. And what a save by Nada. Did he get a piece of it or no? Oh, it went by. Go, count it. it went in. Five to one. Just a bad turnover in their, in their zone, you know. Instead of trying to break it out quickly, they're fumbling with it, and they picked it up and went in and scored. A shorthanded goal, too, for the Grizzlies. 5-1, 25 seconds left. This, uh, the score not really is uh, a real storyteller here as far as this game went. It was pretty close for quite a while. And no, but I think the score tells you how the third period went. Oh, mean, well, they, they just got caught in their zone way too much and got tired. They yeah. just not a lot left. On their heels, you're right. McKinch sent up over Gargaro and all the way down. And that'll do it. The Cooley Region Chill gonna be down in this one by the score of five to one. The Grizzlies take a commanding lead in the third period and take this one to the finish, and the record improves to 34, 8, 1, and 1. And a decent away record of 15, 7, 0, oh, and 1. The Cooley Region Chill dropped to 29, 16, 0, oh, and 0. Oh, and only their fifth blemish of the season here at Green Island Ice Arena. But again, I want to uh, thank everyone here and thank the boys for the honor at the first intermission, I thank you gentlemen for joining me for the broadcast today. This was uh, this was a special moment early on, and you know what? The Chill are going to have a fight the rest of the way. They've got some injuries. They can do it. They can get it done, but they're going to have to go out to Alexandria and get a couple of victories if they want to secure a home playoff game. Yeah, you know, and they're going to have to uh, they're going to have to get some guys healthy a little bit, anyways, just to just to give them the roster, get their roster back up a little bit. Any final words, gentlemen? Well, Rick, it's been a pleasure all these years working with you, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. It's been my pleasure, and uh, we still got more high school hockey to come. It's just the last of the Cooley Region Chill broadcast, possibly, at least last regular season. Dean? Yeah, Rick, I just want to thank you for everything uh, you've done for hockey in the Cooley Region, uh, and it's an honor to call you my friend. Um, Likewise. The friendship that uh, was developed with, between all of us. Uh, with a passion for hockey that you that you brought, and uh, I'm very grateful that I, that uh, that you came into my life. Thanks, buddy. I feel exactly the same way. I feel the same way about uh, Tim Ebner here too. And uh, you know, we're going to continue to to uh, cheer on those Hilltoppers as they uh, go back at it again next year. We've got a college basketball or college basketball. It's almost like college basketball when you're talking about the boys' team as they're going to be heading into the playoffs. We'll have coverage on Cooley Region Sports Network. So you know you'll be able to find the boys basketball team and their hunt for a state championship. And I think it's maybe one of their best chances since the Matt Thomas days. Yeah, boy, they got they got uh, they play good team basketball. You know that's the difference. They they they're, they have talent, but along with that, they're able to play team basketball. Thank you very much. I, I didn't mean to cut no, you off. I saw you. Oh, that was Chris, awesome. Chris Ratloff, Rat, Ratsloff, who uh, you know his son played with the Cooley Region Chill. And a lacrosse freeze, uh, you know, just a heck of a guy and a heck of a head coach. And uh, he was just thanking me for stuff, and that's it's fantastic. I yeah, mean, he's it, done a nice job with this Rochester. He crew. really has. He's really done a great job. And uh, boy, I tell you, I mean, I, you know, obviously you got to look at those other powerhouses like North Iowa is a really good hockey team, and Todd Sandin, who was part of this chill franchise when it began, coming over with Garrett Strote. You go through the list of, I mean, AJ Dagenhart. I mean, look what he put into this franchise. Uh, there's no doubt about it, year after year, you know, it, it, it was just 
so many great people I've come across. You know, you guys, the coaches that have coached, assistant coaches, part of the program, ownership, and uh, all the great fans. Uh, can't uh, can't thank you all enough, and I, I really appreciate everybody that uh, has, uh, has said the nice things to me today. I know I don't make every call correct, and uh, I know I've bungled a few <laughs> over the course of time. But yeah, but you've had Scotty Grand to help yeah, you, Scotty you up, and, and you know what I mean. Scotty bailed you out if, enough. If Scotty wanted to be here today, but uh, he just switched his shift uh, at his uh, paying job and uh, is on overnights now. So. He's snoozing right about now. Well, that's good for him. That way he's out of trouble during the day because he's sleeping, and at night he's working. But Scotty Gran and, and I in the big sway at the Omni Center yeah. trying to look past the Tim Ebner Memorial Drape, those were the days. That's, they were fun times, Rick. Before the box was built over there. Yeah. They put us in a lift, do you remember? I remember. I was a part of that. A, I was scaffolding, a, a scaffolding <laughs> lift. With two big fellas in I it. I was the guy that took the big sway down, if you remember <laughs> I correctly, do. when I, I was the general manager. I, I said, do. it's not going back up. I do. I remember that very, very well. All right. I want to thank Johnny Jones one more time. Thank you very much, sir. You have been a super fan, uh, like super fan Chris and his wife and, uh, and, and, and all those folks. Yes, Who, sir. What do we got? Who's on our camera in the middle today again? Oh, that's, that's Cole, Cole Richter. Richter. Cole Richter has done a great job, and Cole... You know, not only with, uh, yeah, he's hiding behind the beam over there. Cole, stand up and say hi to the people. There, there he is. is. There's Cole Richter. He's uh, done a marvelous job with us on camera at uh, at Center Ice for the last few years. And uh, he also works for the lacrosse loggers on camera as well. So uh, nice to have. Got, you know, these whole broadcasts don't come together without everybody involved. And Absolutely. Everyone's help. So our thanks to everyone that's been involved. I was hoping Josh Moser might have been able to make it today and uh, Ben Pierce, who did our interviews Manny. back in the day. Jamison Zepps has been part of our chill broadcast. We mentioned Scotty Grand. Randy Groth was with us back. Lisa. Back when. Lisa, Lisa K, K did a few done. of the games. Tiana Vanderhei. Uh, boy, I, I hope I don't miss out anybody. We've had Mikey players. Gargaro. Mike Gargaro. Yeah, he was with us here earlier today. There's been a lot of people that have, uh, you know, been parts of players that have done interviews and such over the years. So, again, my thanks to all of you. Uh, on behalf of the entire CRSN crew and Hockey TV, my name is Rick Frankie. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and good night now. We hope you enjoyed CRSN's coverage of the 10th anniversary of Cooley Region Chill Junior Hockey in the Lacrosse area. Presented to you by Cooley Bank. Bank with confidence. Kurt Path State Farm Insurance in Onalaska. There when things go wrong, here to help life go right. Chiropractic Place Family Wellness Centers. Discover the difference. Noble Insurance Service. Building strong relationships to secure your future. Cooley Golf Bowl. The number one recreation facility in Onalaska. Waste Management. Always working for a sustainable tomorrow. Ultra Federal Credit Union. Helping you live your best life. Also by Hilltopper Refuse and Recycling Service at your disposal since 1984. Ebner Properties, a proud supporter of Cooley Region Athletics. BA Burrito Company, delivered to your door with the Eat Street and DoorDash app. Every plumbing and heating, proudly serving the lacrosse area since 1969. Interstate Wealth LLC, your road to success starts right here. Howie's Lacrosse's ultimate sports viewing venue. The Crow, American Gastro Pub and Bourbon Bar, Lacrosse. Big Al's Pizza, Lacrosse's Original. Also by Enhanced Driving Institute, building a new generation of safe drivers. Angelini's Pizzeria and Ristorante, you're invited to taste the difference. Mario's Italian Beef and Hot Dogs, the real deal taste of Chicago. This has been a Cooley Region Sports Network on Hockey TV presentation. To see highlights of chill games and to listen to archives of our coverage, go to CooleyRegionSportsNetwork.com. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at CR Sports Network. And please subscribe to CRSN on YouTube to get immediate notifications every time we go live. Cooley Region Sports Network. Live, local, and anywhere you can get the World Wide Web. C-R-S-N.